Hello friends. Today I want to talk about multiplying by powers of 10. I want to start by thinking about two. I have two dots here. Two dots is the number two. Well, what if I had 10 groups of two? In other words, if I were going to do two times 10. So two, two groups of two, three groups of two, four groups of two, five groups of two, six groups of two, seven groups of two, eight groups of two, nine groups of two, and 10 groups of two. As you can see, now I have one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. This is one ten, and here's another ten. I actually have two groups of ten. So now, instead of just the number two in the ones place, now I actually have to move the two over into the tens place. Because I do that, oh, here's our ones, and here's our tens, right? And if once I do that, two groups of 10, 10, two times, I'm, I no longer have two ones, but another two tens. So I have the two in the tens place. And I have to put a zero here in the ones place to show that this is two tens. The two comes in the tens place. So now two times 10 is equal to 20. And we're going to see a little bit of a pattern happen there. If I use the same strategy and I say that, let's say 35 times 10, okay? So if I start out with 35, these are the tens and these are the ones, and I multiply by 10, if I take three tens and I take 10 groups of three tens, that means I now have three in the hundreds column. And the five, I used to have five ones, but now I have 10 times five ones. So I have a five in the tens column, which means 50. And now I have to put a zero here at the end to show that this is hundreds and this is tens and this is ones. If I didn't put the zero on, it would just look like 35 all over again. So we can see that when we multiply by 10, we shift our numbers in the place value chart to the left when we multiply by 10. We go one uh, shift, one place value to the left. But what if we wanted to multiply by, let's say, another power of 10? Let's say hundreds. So in this case, I have my ones, tens, hundreds, right? And let's say that I want to multiply, uh, I'm going to choose 35 again, and this time I'm going to do 35 times 100. Notice that instead of having one power of 10 here with the zero, I have two powers of 10 because I've multiplied by 10 and by 10 again. So now instead of the three moving into the hundreds place because I'm multiplying by one power of 10, it's actually going to come all the way over here. And the five comes all the way over here and I end up with two empty place values. So now the three becomes three in the thousands place, and the five is five hundreds, and the we have to put two placeholder zeros here because we had two powers of 10. Can you notice that when we multiply by one power of 10, we add one zero on the end? And when we multiply by two powers of 10, we put two zeros on the end. So. We can remember a shortcut for this by remembering that no matter what number we have, if we multiply it by a power of 10, like 10, 100, 1,000, 10,000, any number of power of 10, then we can just use that number of zeros. That works with larger numbers as well. So I'll give an example. If I wanted to do 35 times 10,000, I would have the 35 and one, two, three, four powers of 10. And look how that works. It's like saying 35 times one is 35 times 10 is 350 plus another 10, well, times another 10 makes 3,500. And then another 10 makes 35,000 and another 10 makes 350,000. So 35 
times one is 35 with one, two, three, four powers of 10. One, two, three, four powers of 10. Oh, that makes it so much easier to understand. What if I wanted to do, uh, let's say five times 20. Oh my gosh, 20 it has a power of 10 because it's like two with one power of 10. So first I take five times two and that makes 10. And then I have one power of 10, so I add it on. Five times 20 is 100. Let's try it with an even bigger number. We can do, let's say, 12 times 400. So 12 times four, 12 times four is 48 with one, two powers of 10. So 12 times 400 is 4,800.